Forging IT Security Experts. Secure Ninja. Hey there, it's Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV. I'm here at Black Hat 2012 in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm speaking with Dan Ford. He is the Chief Security Officer at Fixmo, which is a mobile security and risk management company. Now, Dan. You are just finishing up your Doctor of Science, is that correct? That's correct. Now tell us a little bit about that. Sure, so I'm, I'm doing my Doctor of Science at Capitol College, which was the first university to get certified by the National Security Agency in uh, Information Assurance. So my, my dissertation topic is on um, enterprise smartphone security, where specifically I'm taking a look at um, iOS and the enterprise, and can, for instance, you know, for example, Fixmo's um, software that goes on there, can that significantly reduce the risk to the compromised enterprise data when compared with Apple's inherent countermeasure capabilities? So inside there, we're taking a look at, <clears throat> and I'm doing this based on the NIST risk management framework, where we take a look at all of the different controls that are out there for, for NIST, and then what is Apple able to do, and what is Fixmo able to do? And then we basically determine, uh, at that point when it's all said and done, um, can we significantly reduce the risk to you know, potential compromises in enterprise data? Apple, and this is just my opinion, they, for the first time they're coming kind of under the spotlight from a security perspective. I mean, they've always had a really good product, and they have a good product now. Um, but they're kind of doing it all on their own. But when you take a look at the National Vulnerability Database, and they put out, it's called Common Vulnerabilities and Exposure, MITRE's the, the group for the National Vulnerability Database that takes a look at all of these. Apple has the, the most common vulnerabilities and exposure um, from the mobile platform when compared with Android or, you know, RIM, the BlackBerry product. Now, I, I say that in to just in the CVE perspective because it's kind of a two, you know, two-fold thing. One, Apple threw down the gauntlet and said, hey, we're more secure. So all of the hackers out there said, i got to get in. The other part, it's, you know, where all the money is going now. The enterprises are using more iOS devices in the enterprise than what they are you know, when compared prior to years where it was RIM. <clears throat> and then the, the other part in this is that we have to take a look a little bit, dive deeper into it. So not only do you have the CVs, but what is the severity level? You know, and with the National Vulnerability Database, they call it CVSS score. So when you take a look at that, it's 50-50 with apples, whether it's going to be high or somewhat medium or low. That, that's that's pretty significant, you know, having a 50% chance of it being a high vulnerability. Now with Android, it's an 80% chance, and this was as of data about two weeks ago. So I haven't looked in the last two weeks, but that's, that's pretty significant when in any piece of data by itself on any of these mobile devices, your best case scenario is a 50% chance that your data could be easily compromised based on a vulnerability that comes out. It's a pretty high chance. Mm, yes. So Apple just presented at Black Hat for the very first time. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised to hear that they were going to participate? Actually, yeah, yeah, I really was kind of surprised that they were going to participate. And I think the reason why they chose to do so was they have been kind of getting some bad press recently. So they wanted to kind of bring themselves out and say, hey, we do have a good security model. We put out a white paper in May. Let's talk a little bit about that and show you what we're trying to do to protect data on these devices. But what I think in a lot of ways what they've kind of failed to do or necessarily, and again, you know, they're, they're trying to market their own product. I don't, I'm not too sure that they were completely forthright when everything that they're talking about. They're really, you know, and there's been other groups that have, that have talked about this. You've got, and hopefully I'm not brutalizing their name too much, but it's Fraunhofer Group out in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. They did a study called the iOS you know, um, Keychain Weakness FAQ from version 501, um, talking about everything kind of what Apple was talking about in their uh, data protection with the different classifications where you can put authentication credentials inside the keychain. And they showed that it wasn't as great as what Apple claimed it to be. Recently, you've got Jonathan Zdarsky's book in January of 2012 called Hacking and Securing iOS Apps. He also is talking about that. And then Charlie Miller and um, a, a number of colleagues of him, of his rather, uh, in May put out another book I think that one was called the iOS Hacker's Handbook. So Apple had to respond, but they didn't say anything different than what the security community has already known, and they kind of sugarcoated it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, whereas when we're trying to make informed risk-based decisions in a security space, we have to know the facts. 
And if not, it kind of makes some of us lose confidence in what they're saying. And that doesn't matter if it's Apple or any other company, even Fixmo. If we don't tell you this is what it is, and this is what you're going to be able to do to remedy the situation, then we start to lose faith in them. Right. Now, Apple, again, is doing a really good job, but there are things that could be improved upon. And I have full confidence that Apple will start to improve upon them. But in the meantime, you've got companies like, like Fixmo that were out there trying to help people to write apps in a more secure manner that will allow enterprises to use these devices as you know, getting, especially with the iPad, into a, you know, a really true replacement for a laptop. Right. What are um, some of the ways that companies can write apps in a more secure <coughs> manner? So not only just with Fixmo, there's other organizations, but I like to think that ours is the best. But there's, you know, anything that's not, when you're storing the authentication credentials, you don't want to use the iOS keychain. Because if you can read a book, and I can say that because my 11-year-old was easily able to follow um, Zadarsky's methodology, because he can read, he can type on a computer, wow. and he was able to use that method to take all of the authentication credentials stored in the keychain in less than 15 minutes. So I kind of always look back as if, if my 11-year-old can do this, <sighs> yeah. then so can pretty much anyone. Um, but Apple provides, and so does Android, a good way, a good starting point. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the really key, because if, the, if the, the, the platform is completely flawed, then everything else will be. So first, with any of the authentication credentials, either it has to be online, where it's a constant direct communication. If you don't have that interconnection, internet connection where the authentication credentials are going over in a secure manner and it's being uh, looked at on the back end, or you have to use something that is not using the iOS keychain or Android's password manager. And there's us and there's some other companies that are doing this as well, but a very small handful. I would say probably um, around maybe half a dozen companies that are doing things like what Fixmo is doing. So give us a little bit of a background on Fixmo. Sure, great. So Fixmo is about a three-year-old company. We, you know, we're headquartered in Tor Toronto. Um, started off you know, helping people to manage your Blackberries a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And then you know, one day we uh, <clears throat> were you know, sitting right next to some people in the government and we figured out a way that we could um, make smartphones, first BlackBerry, a lot more secure. And really it comes down to always knowing that when your smartphone is booting up in a known trusted state, because that's where the risk first starts off with. Got to start off with the device and then you move up from there because it's kind of like a chain of trust. If I don't trust the device, I can't trust anything, that, anything that's riding on the device. Right. So then moving from there <clears throat> with um, the device, we move that up into being able to start understanding more about the operating system. And then from there, the applications, which is kind of like what our, um, you know, our recent partnership with App Authority was all about. Because you have to take a look at what the apps that are on the device as well. So we take all of this, the apps, the operating system, the device itself, and we are developing essentially a risk score based a lot on the NIST framework to be able to better help enterprises understand what their mobile risk is. And that's important because as fast as this environment is moving, you have to be able to you know, be able to change, and what's changing is your risk. So I accepted a risk at X. If it changed the Y and Y is not acceptable, the answer that we're giving IT to their senior management people are if I have $1 to spend in improving my risk profile, where am I gonna spend it and why? and how am I going to use those resources in order to do it. And that's really what Fixmo is about, is being, being able to help senior management make informed risk-based decisions on their mobile computing environment. Excellent. Well, it's so good to learn about Fixmo, and thank you so much, Dan, for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Definitely enjoy the rest of Black Hat and DEF CON. Thanks. Secure Ninja Shorts are brought to you by SecureNinja.com a world leader in information security and IT training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. SecureNinja.com, forging IT security experts. Yeah!